Good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day. It's good to be with you this morning. Ladies, did you get a carnation? I hope so. Good, good, good. To honor you for your love. Thank you. Uh, Today is a day when we think about the enormous uh, transcending love of God and how it's expressed to us through our mothers. It's a great day to worship the source of love. Um, As we uh, begin our worship, we want to remember in prayer those who need those blessings. Would you please remember uh, the family of Tom Williams? Uh, Tom died uh, this morning at about three. Uh, Darcy remains out of town, so uh, if you were to go by her house, she wouldn't be there uh, just now. But if you'll remember Darcy in prayer, that would be lovely. Uh, Are there others that you would have us remember on this side? Yes. Noel and Donor, thank you. Yes. Gary Thompson, thank you. Others on this side? How about on this side? Yes. Tom Harris, thank you. Jack. The Godwin family. Thank you. Carol Fleming. Carol Fleming. Thank you. Choir? Becky Nolan. Becky Nolan. Carol Welsh. Carol Welsh. Alex. Alex. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, which is eternal, everlasting, undiminished, even when our love for you perhaps is not all that it might be. We thank you for this unconditional love and for the ways that somehow you express it in our mothers. We bless them before you now. Grant that we might worship you, O Lord, in spirit and in truth, and we thank you for everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. The hymn is number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. Let's stand.
may be seated. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please continue in silent confession. Heavenly Father, with love that will never let us go, separate our sins as far as the east is from the west. Through the eternal love of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll receive the offering in, in just a moment. Uh, before we do, I'd like for you to see the video for this week's uh, mission emphasis. Uh, we have in our church a wonderful group of people who uh, are dedicated to serving those with special needs. And one of the ministries that they're involved with is Special Olympics. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful ministry this is. It brings so much joy to the young people that are involved with that and also to the adults that help make it possible. It is a, a wonderful ministry, and I invite you to hear and see this clip. The goal of Special Olympics is to inspire children and adults with intellectual and physical disabilities to develop the perseverance, spirit, and skills to realize their hopes and dreams. On Saturday, April 30th, Dare County Special Olympics held its fifth annual spring games at First Flight High School in Kill Devil Hills. Many members of our church volunteered to make this day possible and successful. The love and support from our church is deeply appreciated. Thank you. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Scripture comes from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, 
for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, as uh, we all think about Mother's Day, uh, all of us think about our own mothers. Uh, many of us, uh, or many of you, I should say, uh, think of the job you have of mothering. Um, some of you may have very young children. Some of you may have children who are senior citizens themselves. But if you are a mother, you know the job of mothering is never, ever done, is it? So today, as uh, we think together both of the gift of love in our own mothers and the gift of love that mothers wish to give to their children, I think of the legacy. I think of the legacy that your mother left for you and that you will leave for your children. Gentlemen, if you're dads, you can sort of translate some of this into dad speak, but today we focus on the mothers. I think perhaps the three things that uh, we most want to give our children might be love, roots, and wings. You think so? Love, roots, and wings. When we think of uh, love, that is sometimes a very tricky thing, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's not that we don't love our children. We certainly do. It's that we sometimes wonder what is the best way to express that love, don't we? We perhaps wonder about that when our children are in difficulty. As children, both little ones and big ones sometimes are. We wonder how we should best express our love to our children. One of the most wonderful things about being a mother is that somehow or other, when our children are born, God gives mothers an enormous reservoir of love as a gift. Somehow or other, when your children are born, God gives you a reservoir of love that is perhaps unlike any other. And for the most part, it is inexhaustible. You know, one of the things that uh, we know, partly because of a wonderful, well-respected study that was recently done, the number one indicator of the faith that children will have is the faith of their parents. The number one indicator of the faith that children will have is the faith of their parents. I was surprised to, to read that and hear that. I certainly thought that the number one indicator of the faith that children have would have been the profundity of preaching that they hear from the pulpit. <laughs> but strangely, that's not it. It's not even a close second, by the way. Uh, the number one indicator of, of a child's faith, of a young person's faith, the number one indicator is the faith of their parents. 
And so one of the things that we think of as we, we want to give love to our children is we want to give them a kind of rootedness in God, a kind of rootedness in God. Life is very difficult, and it's not just difficult for you. It's difficult for everyone. It's difficult for you. It's difficult for your children. It will continue to be difficult. I don't mean by this to be uh, gloomy or doomsayer. Life is wonderful in more ways than we can count. But it is also difficult. And because it is difficult, our children need a great span of roots to withstand the storms of life. You know, when storms come to the coast of eastern North Carolina, some of the trees that are uprooted first are pine trees, aren't they? And you know one of the reasons for that. Pine trees' roots don't spread very wide. And because their roots don't spread very wide, they seem to be particularly susceptible when storms come. But you know, a kind of tree that is very, very strong over generations are giant sequoias. Giant sequoias. Have you ever seen giant sequoias? So many of you have. You know, you don't usually see a giant sequoia standing alone in splendid isolation, do you? There's a reason for that. The ones that stand alone in splendid isolation don't stand for long. They're so tall. But their roots don't spread all that wide. The sequoias that stand the longest are the sequoias that stand in community with other sequoias. And somehow what happens is, in community with other great sequoias, the roots from one tree to another intermingle, intertwine. And the, they create in a community a web of roots that is all but impervious to the greatest storms that come to them. When you and I think about the roots that we want to provide for our children, I think of two areas of rootedness. One area I think of in terms of rootedness is your faith in God. Your faith in God. There's no substitute for your faith in terms of influencing your children. And I'll tell you something you already know. You can't fake it. When your children are five or six years old, they may not know the difference between real faith and lip service faith. They may not know the difference between real faith and counterfeit faith. And also, when your children are in their teens, they may suspect that your faith is counterfeit or artificial in ways that it is not. Because teenagers, idealistic and unseasoned, may not always be able to sift out the real from the false. But as your children grow and become older and more mature, as they become adults, they know, they know the faith that you have. If it's genuine, if it provides a foundation for you that goes both deep and wide, they know that. They see your strength. And your strength lend strength to them. Your groundedness gives groundedness to them, even if they don't own and claim the faith 
that you taught them and that you modeled for them. Your faith, your strength gives them a kind of faith, a kind of hope, a kind of groundedness, and a kind of strength that nothing else can. One of the saddest things that I think of as a pastor is people who bring their children to church and who come with them until their children get maybe into junior high or graduate from high school. And then when the children fly from the nest, the parents fly from the church, fly from their faith. It's as if their faith was also sort of like their teaching about Santa Claus. Lovely for children. Not really practical for adults. What a sad thing for children in their 20s, 30s, and 50s to see parents that gave lip service to faith in their childhood and in their youth. But then as soon as the duties of raising children were done, the faith and the connectedness with the church were discarded along with the Fisher Price toys that were put up in the attic. Our children know what sustains us in our lives. Our children know whether our faith is real and genuine or whether it was just a set of teachings that were appropriate for kindergarten and to be discarded for adulthood. It may be that as you're grown and as your children are grown, they may not be as interested in hearing you teach about theology as perhaps they were when they were younger and a captive audience. But they watch you. They watch you. They know <laughs> you. And when your children are grown, it's not the constant teaching of your words that guide them and inspire them. It's the example that you live. I call it follow through. Many of you are golfers. If you're a golfer, you know how important follow through is to your swing. If you play baseball, you know how important follow through is to your batting. Follow through is absolutely crucial in sports and also in rearing children. When our children are packed off to college, when our children leave home and they only are now coming home for holidays, when they think they're grown, and you know better. They depend on you to be strong. They depend on you to follow through in your faith. And as you follow through in your faith, that gives them a kind of security that is vital for young people in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s because you know your 60 year old children are also looking to see how their 80 and 90 year old parents are managing and navigating the last stages of adulthood you're paving the way for them and they're watching sometimes silently but they're watching they may not follow everything you'd like for them to follow in your example, but they're watching closely enough 
and you are providing stability for them that they will never forget and for which they will always be grateful. So the first thing that I think of that we provide for them is love. The second thing that I think of that we provide for them is roots. The third thing that we provide for them, I hope, are wings. Maybe that's the hardest part, providing the wings. Because of course, when you provide wings for your children, you don't know where their wings will take them to you. When you set your children free to take what they've learned and to leave home, to strike out on their own, you don't know where they'll go. You don't know what they will produce. You don't know what their lives will be like. And heaven knows you don't get to choose who they'll marry. But you provide them with wings. You know, not every child wants wings, do they? Some birds want to stay in the nest. And they'll find all kinds of reasons to stay there. And why not? Mommy and Daddy have made the loveliest and most comfortable of nests. <laughs> Some little birds have to be pushed from the nest. <laughs> I don't mean to be too specific. Some little birds may very well need to stay in the nest for a very long time. But when things are as they should be, Mom knows, and Dad may know also, when it's time for the most loving thing that a parent can do is to say, you know, I gave you love, and that will never, never stop. I've given you roots, and they make you strong, and now, I'm giving you wings, and you must fly. Sometimes that's so difficult for a parent. Sometimes, not always, but particularly for mothers. Because mothers are so nurturing sometimes, so protective sometimes. Mothers have this natural desire to keep the biddies under the wing. And yet mothers also know that sometimes the kindest thing they can say is, you must fly, and you must fly now. And when we do that, our children are able to take what we've given them and see what they can make of their own lives. They'll reference back to you They'll remember things that you don't want them to remember. And they will remind you of those things. Maybe not on Mother's Day. But they'll also remember the things that you did for them. That will inspire them long after you have gone to heaven. Love, roots, wings. The last thing that I want to say is that today, some mothers and children are separated by death. There are mothers here who have children in heaven. There are children here who have mothers in heaven. For those, it's a good day to remember that because of what Jesus did on the cross, and through his resurrection on Easter Day, we have tokens and promise of eternal life. Those who live in heaven, pray for us. 
Their love for us will never let us go. And they wait in joy, in pleasure, and anticipation for your joining them. And when you see them again, that will be a wonderful, wonderful time. So on this Mother's Day, we come and we worship God. We worship God giving him thanks for parents that showed us a dim reflection of what God's love is like that will never let us go. We come celebrating our rootedness with our faith in God that is made strong by community in the church. We come asking God to give us strength, to give our children wings, to let go of them at the right time and in the right way, to stop trying to teach them with unsolicited words, but rather to inspire them with a life lived in faithfulness and joy and our glorious hope in the resurrection. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 102, Now Thank We All Our God. <clears throat> this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy. Unto the only wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power. And may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.